What's up guys, Quickship636 here, and in today's episode, we go over everything we talked about last week, because I told you it was going to come true. So just hang tight, let's get into it. Cheers. Hope you guys had an amazing weekend. Let's go and get this week started with some World Superbike news. So, I believe I called this last week or two weeks ago when I did the other motocast. Um, what do you think? Should we run the clip? Let's run clip. And then we're gonna have Scott Redding to replace Alvaro Batista. Hmm. Um, should he move to HRC? But again, that's gonna, that's mm -hmm. been confirmed already. Yeah, so. that's right. I did say that. Matter of fact, Avaro Bautista finally confirmed to be leaving Ducati. That's right, Avaro Bautista finally leaving Ducati to join HRC Honda for 2020 to run their new Fireblade. Scott Redding will be taking his spot. Again, guys, I've talked about it before. I think Avaro Bautista is a big baby. I think he's. I think he's stupid for walking away from Ducati, in my honest opinion. However, with HRC coming into World Superbike again and wanting to strive and push forward, I think it's a perfect time for Alvaro Batista to get in there and be their golden boy um, to really, really push him and, and make him competitive again and stuff. So, again, I think it's chicken shit. I've talked about it before, I've said it over and over and over again. But is it a good play? Probably yes, probably yes. I'm gonna go with a good play on that. But Scott Redding is, is no slouch himself, so he'll be in, coming in for Ducati, and I bet you anything, it's probably gonna give Jonathan Ray one hell of a run for 2020. I'm Pickle Rick! Now to hop right into MotoGP, a lot going on, a lot of switching teams, just all over the damn place. Um, Man, it's gonna be real, real hard going into 2020 because there's so many people jumping manufacturers and stuff like that. You almost just have to ride, you know, stay for the rider, basically. Uh, we have Johan Zarco departing ways with KTM after only one year with the manufacturer. I'm reading my notes here, and this is, what, this is pretty specific. So, um, he annihilated on the Yamaha Tech 3. When he came out in MotoGP, he freaking rocked it. Um, you know, just, just, just asserting dominance in Moto, in Moto GP, uh, like he had in all the previous classes. So well, I was very, very excited to see him come and, and and really do so well. But on KTM, he just that they just never really materialized for him. So it's unfortunate to see that because he was such a, he is such a talented rider. But basically, what he ended up saying right here is he just felt like. He just couldn't really do it on that manufacturer. And and that's what you hear. That's kind of a, a, a trend if you hear that, you know, it can really do it with that manufacturer. Um, you look at Alvaro Batista, the manufacturer. You look at everyone, it's just it's the manufacturer. You can't do it with the manufacturer. Or Jorge, Jorge Lorenzo, Cal Crutchlow, can't do it with the manufacturer. I wonder if that's more of a plea. You know, I wonder if it's more of a cop out than anything to say that I just can't do it right now with, you know, where I'm at, you know, be damned the manufacturer. I'm talking about where he's at, where they're at as a writing ability. And of course, I'm not a MotoGP writer. I don't know that, you know, I'm just looking at the trend that you start to see here. Everyone cannot do it currently with their manufacturer. And of course, God bless his heart, Valentino Rossi, saying that he can do the best, that it's his fault that the Yamaha is not that good. Not that the Yamaha is not good, it's his fault that the Yamaha is not good. Maybe that's just a different way of speaking with the media. I'm not sure, that's just my take on it. Now, let's talk about some stupid real quick. A lot of stupid, right? There's stupid, there's stupid you learn from, and then there's just, just stupid that you don't learn from, and I guess you just never will. Stupid as stupid does, Miss Blue. Real quick, Danny Kent. Danny Kent. Currently a BSB writer. Ah, former BSB writer, that's right. So Danny Kent has been completely eliminated from his contract from MB Augusta, the UK team in BSB. Let me read this to you. So 
Danny Kent has been suspended indefinitely because him and his brother were allegedly collecting a debt um, with a 62 year old man. Yeah. And when he found his brother in a tussle with this gentleman, Danny Kent then pulls out a knife. Doesn't say he attacked the man, but pulls out this knife that's well beyond a normal blade of a knife, full blown kitchen knife to say that this is what he uses in his day to day job for work to cut boxes open. Come on now. You can't do that kind of stuff when you're a premier writer like that. When you're all over MotoGP before, then you go to BSB and you're all over BSB. You just can't do that, guys. You can't act stupid, can't be stupid. But again, what did Forrest Gump say? Stupid is stupid does, Mrs. Blue. That's right. Stupid is stupid does. It's done. It's over. He's completely had his license suspended for any kind of motorcycle racing completely. BSB, his team dropped him completely. Read this right here, just to let you know. Danny was today given a suspended sentence by the court and we cannot condone criminal activity of any nature, said the Bike Devil MV Augusta UK team principal, David Tyson. He has been released from any further obligations he had with us. Guys, that's not fired with money owing back. That's full blown shit can. That's full blown bitch. Get out of here. We're done with you. We don't want to be get seen with you. We don't want to have any business with you. Tell you what, what a way to shit your career with just a few actions, guys. A few actions, and you know, it just it's just crazy to me. It's just crazy because you know these guys that jump from BSB or W, uh, you know, a World Superbike to MotoGP three two all over the place, Moto America, um, you know, when they start winning, their names supersede them. So they're able to jump from these type of racing, you know, uh, events so easy, it, it seems. And it just sucks to have someone piss away an opportunity like that. Cause I know there's a lot of hungry riders out there. Um, but then again, that's just, just don't be stupid, I guess. I don't know, man. It just, uh, just dumb, just dumb. He's back. Uh, I mean, kind of. So Jorge Lorenzo is back. Last pass yesterday, they raced at Silverstone. Um, Saturday, well, let's go back to Friday. And Friday uh, practice, Jorge Lorenzo struggled the entire time um, from his back injuries they sustained a couple months ago. Still finding it difficult to get on the bike. I've talked about it before where Jorge was just not too comfortable on the bike anymore. There was a talks about him leaving Honda and going back to Ducati. That's since been squashed. That's not gonna happen no more. And now what Lorenzo said, this is key note right here, something to note. He said that this last accident made him think that, wow, my body may not be able to handle these types of crashes anymore. That's huge right there. Guys, if you haven't seen the the movie uh, Fastest and Hitting the Apex, if you have not seen those two MotoGP documentaries, you have to. This is a prime example of what they talk about in there where riders crash and learn, and then there's riders that crash and fear. That's no different than what we got going on, right? I race bikes, I've crashed, I feared the bike. I feared the bike for a very, very long time and it scared me and almost made me crash even more. What have you guys done in your particular riding that's happened like that where an incident has happened and you guys have started to fear the bike or fear anything? That's what's in Lorenzo's mindset right now. Because what he ended up saying was that, he, yeah, he struggled the entire time in qualifying and he was chasing half his siren, he was, he was, he was chasing him, but he was a second behind him and he would have to pull a second ahead of him. And what he said was, pushing the catch up with the other riders just isn't worth it. Just isn't worth the injury. That's not the Jorge Lorenzo that'd be willing to go through and bust his ass and, and put the bike in there. I've seen him do battles with everybody throughout the years. That's not the same Jorge Lorenzo guys. The mindset is completely changed with that man. 
and I'm really interested to see what happens when he goes out through his contract in 2020 with Honda because with that mindset if wins don't start trickling in I believe Jorge Lorenzo will be without a ride in 2021 and that's my prediction you heard it here first and that's it guys for Motocast Monday episode number 24 a lot of information going on with World Superbike and MotoGP, guys. Check it out, man. If you guys are not familiar with it, check it out. I'm telling you, just the off-track drama that's going on with the switching teams, the, the mindset of the riders like we talked about with Jorge Lorenzo, the uh, Danny Kent carrying a kitchen knife just to go collect money. Like, what the hell are we even doing? Just just crazy drama, nonsense, bullcrap. But, you know... That's uh, that's racing, right? That's motorcycles right there. Again, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it. You guys have an amazing week. You guys have a kick-ass day. You know, ready or not, I'll be, baby. See you on the next one. Cheer. Rick, do you have anything to say? I'm Pickle Rick! I'm pickle Rick. I'm pickle Rick. I'm pickle Rick. I'm pickle Rick. I'm pickle Rick.